Hey there, it's day 11. It's gonna be a big one. Um, I'm gonna paddle to the top of Glenwood Canyon this morning. It's a 10 mile paddle. And then I'm gonna have like a, I think a 14, 13 and a half, 14 mile hike down the bike path into the town of Glenwood Springs. Um, it's gonna be an interesting day. It's gonna be really hot, I'm sure. So that hike is probably gonna be pretty brutal. It's also gonna be interesting because Glenwood, so there was a huge fire last summer in Glenwood Springs, or in Glenwood Canyon. It was the Grizzly Creek fire, I think. It was massive, burned a, a huge part of the canyon, and and this summer they've been having a bunch of mudslides in there uh, when it rains really hard. All the, all the burned areas just flash flood or mudslide or whatever, and uh, Last time I had service, I was reading that they were having to shut I-70 down several times because of the mudslides. So I honestly don't even know if the bike path is gonna be open. So once I get back into service, I'll I'll get online and look at that. Um, I guess I'll know when I get there though. So could be could be a very interesting day. like a little bit of fun to start off the day. I accidentally put the GoPro in the backpack. Don't have time to get it back out. <laughs> hey, it's a very nice day so far. There have been some really fun rapids. I wish that I uh, remembered to get the GoPro out um, but I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna stop at Dot Cerro, which is in a couple miles. It, uh, I forgot to put sunscreen on this morning too, so I need to stop and do that before the sun starts blazing. This would be I-70 up here, so getting close to Dot Cerro. All right, here's the Dot Cerro boat ramp. I'm gonna hop out here briefly. So I just got back into cell phone service here and I checked the weather. There's only a 30% chance of thunderstorms. It's only supposed to get up to 90 degrees, which is hot, but that's manageable. I think it was quite a bit warmer the last two days, like 94, 95. So, and then also um, I didn't see anything about the bike path being closed. So uh, should be able to do this today. So this right here would be the confluence of the Eagle River and the Colorado. Well, this isn't the most scenic paddling ever. I'm right in between I-70 and the train tracks there. A little noisy. <laughs> Erosion control. One way of doing it anyway. It's pretty wild. <laughs> never seen anything like that. So I'm about to enter the upper end of uh, Glenwood Canyon. You can already see a uh, big part of the burn area up there. Not much of a current on this section and of course I have a headwind so I'm having to paddle pretty hard to make any progress but the views are amazing. Floating alongside the bike path now. It's built right above the river and right next to I-70. It always blows my mind every time I see this. It's just amazing the, how they built that. See some more of the burn area up there. Also some clouds building up. I really hope that uh, those hold off. Pretty sure this would be my take out here. This is actually a I-70 rest stop here. 
should be plenty of shade to uh, hang out and pack the boat up. There we go. Perfect. Oh, I'm going to hang out here for a bit in the shade, have lunch, then pack up and get to hiking. Today's delicious lunch is going to be a tuna melt tortilla. Mm-mm. Brought to you by Clover Valley. Here's the deflated boat and paddle, believe it or not. Backs up pretty good. Crikey, I may be in trouble here. Oh no, it may actually be closed. I, I saw people riding the path, so I don't, I don't know what to do. Looks like they probably did have a big mudslide come through here. But, uh, yeah, really came right down this drainage. I don't know if I have any other options other than hitchhiking. I can't just walk down the highway. I probably should have stayed on the river a little bit longer. It looks calm still. Well, it turns out I definitely could have kept paddling. <laughs> it's uh, pretty calm. Actually, I don't know. This might be even better. There's like zero current at all out there and there's a little bit of a headwind. I guess walking maybe is the way to go. Be the Shoshone Dam down there, I think. So, below Shoshone Dam. And I'm walking underneath all these bridges or the highway. It's just so cool how they built this through the canyon. Always amazes me. So it's super bony here below the dam. Um, I think at that dam they actually suck a bunch of the water out of the river and then it goes through a, a power plant they generate electricity with it and then i think it they pump it back into the river down here somewhere so it looks like that right there is where they pump it back into the river pretty crazy okay yeah i think it's definitely closed here Shit. Landslide that has the entire river dammed up down there. That is just wild. It's pretty much a lake right here right now. Okay, latest update. Stuck at Hanging Lake Trailhead. I'm trying to hitch a ride into town because the trail is for sure 100% closed. Uh, the only other route is the highway. Obviously can't walk that through here. And I was just informed that they're evacuating the area because of weather. <laughs> so I'm stuck in a pretty rough situation here unless somebody picks me up here real quick. All right, I was able to hitch into town. Um, actually, the exit just before town. Got myself a little cabin here right on the river. So I ended up hitchhiking into town. I'm actually in No Name, which is a couple miles east of Glenwood Springs. Uh, yeah, hitchhiking, it was my only option. The, the bike path was for sure closed. There was a landslide 
pretty much all the way across the river, which it was damming up the river, made it pretty much a lake, and then the uh, and the the bike route was just completely underwater. So there's no other way of there was no other way of, for me to get here because the only thing that runs through there is the highway, and couldn't walk down that. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do right now. I don't know if because it feels like it just doesn't count, even though it was, it's only seven miles that I skipped, but it still feels like it totally doesn't count. I wanted this to be a fully human powered, human and gravity powered trip. So I don't know. I don't know if I just keep going and forget about it or if I don't know, I could put the trip on hiatus and maybe come back here when that's open back up and start from Hanging Lake, where I where I got the ride from. Sort of leaning in that direction. Cause it's gonna be like, it's gonna be almost 100 degrees down in Grand Junction for the next few days, which is where I'm headed. So, it sounds a little nicer coming back here in the fall when the canyon is open and it's not a million degrees so might do that and I can just I can just hop on the train here the Amtrak and ride that back to Denver along my route which would be cool and it goes through Gore Canyon too which is always be cool to see that so anyway yeah I, I uh I'm at my cabin here I got myself a nice little cabin for the next two nights give you a little tour this is it don't mind the clothes just doing hobo laundry drying out all the gear it's a total wreck uh, got a nice little porch swing and then this is it I got a fan in a bed with no linens <laughs> but I got my sleeping bag so I'll survive in a window and bunk beds and yeah that's it <laughs> home sweet home for the next two nights